Hello guys, Simon here. Today I'm going to show you how to install and use the Substance Designer labeling with Houdini. This plugin version works with Designer 2019 and newer, so let's get started. From Gumroad, download the zip of the version 2.0.1 or greater and extract it. Inside, you'll find a folder called Solid Link. Copy the folder and paste it in the Designer Python Plugins folder, usually located in your Documents, Algorithmic, Substance Designer, Python, SD User Plugins. Now let's open Substance Designer. To verify the plugin was installed correctly, go to Tools, Plugin Manager, and you should be able to see it listed, with the checkbox enabled. If it is not enabled, just enable it and restart Designer. Also, you should be able to see a new window in your Designer interface, called Substance Designer Labeling. If you cannot see it, check it is enabled in the Windows menu. Now let's install the Houdini client and verify the license of the plugin. Let's go to the Config tab of the plugin, and to install the client, select the version of Houdini that you want to use. In my case, I will select 18.5 for Python 2. Remember that Houdini has two versions, Python 2 and Python 3. So be sure you select the correct version depending on your Houdini installation. The path will be automatically selected, so we can just click the Install button. To verify it works, we can click the Folder button and we should be able to see a new folder called Show the Link inside the Scripts Python folder and a new shell file in the Toolbar folder. Now let's open Houdini and verify it is working. Let's add the show list link toolbar and click the button. And if everything is working, a new window should appear. Now if you open Designer, both apps should be connected. We can see it in the connection section of the plugin in Designer and the plugin window of Houdini. It is important to notice that the connection will only be available as long as the Houdini plugin window is open. If we close it, the connection will end and if we open it, it will start again. Next, before sending anything between the apps, we need to verify the plugin. First, let's open the Python editor located in Windows Python editor, and here we'll be able to see all the messages of the plugin, like errors, warnings, etc. Then we go to the config tab, paste the license we got from Google, and click verify. If successful, the email associated with the license will appear in the email field, and a success message will appear in the Python editor. Finally, it's time to see the plugin in action. In the connection section, you'll see the designer instance unique ID, the connected apps, in this case only Houdini, the available renders for Houdini, we have Mantra, Arnold, Redshift, Renderman, V-Ray and Octane, also like V-Ray, and the available presets. For most renderers, we'll have the standard that will rely on UVs and some tree planner options. I'll select standard for now. Now let's see how the notes button work. Let's open an empty graph and click the button. As you can see, this will help you create the available outputs for each render preset. For example, V-Ray uses PBR metallic roughness, so when I click the Nodes button, all the outputs will be created. If I have nothing selected, the outputs will be created at the origin, and if I select a node, they will be created after the selection. If I don't intend to use an optional map like Opacity or Emissive, I just need to delete the output nodes. And if you already have outputs in your substance, you can use those. The only important thing to consider is that the identifiers must match the text defined in the preset generated by the Nodes button. Now, with a substance material fully created and the outputs connected, let's send it to Houdini and V-Ray. First, we need to define the map name. We can write a custom name or click the arrow button to get the name of the current graph. Then we have the path in which all the texture sets will be exported. By default, all will be exported to an export folder in your documents. Next, we have the format. In my case, I'll use PNG. Then we have a checkbox called Inner Workflow. Enable it if you're using 32-bit files like EXR. Next, we have some emission and hide options, in case you're using those maps. And for Houdini, we also have a Houdini path. Depending on the render you choose, you need to select either the matte context or the shop context. For V-Ray, we'll select the matte context. And finally, two buttons, Send and Update. Send will create the shader network from scratch, and Update will export the maps. That way, you will keep the changes in case you modify the network after creating it the first time. Let's click Send. And now in Houdini, we will have a new material. We assign it to the cylinder.
and everything is working as expected. We exported the material from this editor to Houdini and created the correct shader network for V-Ray. Well, that's all for now. See you next time. Good luck.